Hello and welcome to the Natural State Update, a new digital platform bringing you relevant information and stories that are all about things that impact our Kansans. I'm Christina Munoz and I'm joined by people you might recognize, Scott Inman, Jason Peterson, and Jansen. We may not be on television anymore, but we are still very passionate about informing the public quality content and raising awareness about things that are important to our Kansans. So I'm going to start with my former co-anchor, Scott Inman. You've turned what, this way before. I know, I've, this feels very familiar. Yes. What have you been up to and what will you be sharing on this platform? Yeah, well, thanks, Christina. Thanks for having us. I think yes. it's a great opportunity for us as well uh, as the viewers. So I've been out of broadcast television now since uh, 2016. Okay. I obviously was on the anchor desk in television news as a TV uh, news anchor for about 13 years. Prior to that, I was on uh, the sports desk, and of course, I've worked with the Razorbacks uh, for, for a long period of time and, and just got out of that a couple of years ago. But for the last six plus years, I've worked for Genwell Financial Advisors. I'm a financial advisor for that firm. We're a local firm. Uh, we've got offices all across the state of Arkansas and in Louisiana and Middle Tennessee now. A uh, very gr big growing company, and, and I've been a part of financial planning for uh, hundreds of Arkansans now um, as they invest and accumulate wealth and then walk into the new phase of their lives and that's retirement. So we do retirement income planning specifically, but we also do a radio show. And I've been hosting- You've got some experience there. Yeah, I've been co-hosting <laughs> the Get Ready for the Future show since I first started at Gen Wealth. So that was an easy transition. Mm -hmm. And on that radio show, we are passionate about more than just investing and retirement planning, but all things money related. Mm -hmm. Our passion is really education. Mm -hmm. And we believe that uh, anything uh, that has to do with your money is worth talking about and helping people make the right financial decisions for a better financial future. So this fits in for mm -hmm. me to have an opportunity to give some people some information, some resources, some education that will hopefully help them make better financial decisions. Talk about raising awareness and education on something we think is so important. So. Yeah. Very good. And on to one of our former co-workers as well, Jason Peterson. Over to you. Well, Scott's been out for six years. I've been out for two years. Uh, I was a reporter in central Arkansas for about 24 years. Loved it. And fortunately, I love what I'm doing now, too. I am in state government. I work for DHS. My official title is the Deputy Chief of Community Engagement, which sounds fancier than it is. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it, well, basically, as a journalist, I communicated, and that's what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. I'm still in the communications business. I'm just not talking to everyone. I'm talking to the people that DHS serves and listening to them and trying to find out how we can serve them better. Uh, as far as this, this effort, uh, it's exciting to be a part and be able to identify stories that I think and hopefully you'll think are impactful, inspirational, educational. I'm going to look for those things that I believe when you watch it, you'll feel like that was well worth your time. And so that's what I'll be hoping to contribute. Very excited. Thank you so much. And to the one that's been in the industry longer than any of us, Ann Jansen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm from here. I uh, was on uh, television for about 20, a little over 26 years yeah. and um, have been gone for about 15. So you do the math. <laughs> um, but really haven't been involved in anything other than some volunteer work and, and things like that. Raising and your children. Raising kids and yeah, taking care of people. And, um, and just one of the things that I was so excited about when I heard about this happening was um, I've always been passionate about the arts and every kind of arts from performing arts to uh, the art, you know, drawing, painting, uh, music just mm. sculptures, everything, and I'm really excited about where the state of Arkansas is right now as far as all of the different venues we have for really showcasing arts that are getting national and even global attention. So that's my dream is to be able to share that with you guys so that you can um, enjoy them too. Absolutely, you're speaking my language. So as I said, I'm Christina Munoz and I was in broadcast journalism here in this market for 11 years, starting in 2003. Uh, before that, I was in Minnesota and born and raised in South Dakota. Uh, when I left, I went into higher education, PR marketing, communications. And uh, then about four years ago, I started my own PR marketing firm and went completely into the entrepreneurial world. Um, I serve as talent for commercials nationwide. I host and MC podcasts and events. I 
have a skincare business, and I teach five dance classes a week at the local <laughs> dance studio in Conway. I'm tired of just listening to you talk about it. <laughs> but truly, <laughs> we believe that how people get their information has changed, and what kind of information they're looking for has changed. And that's why we're going to be here every week sharing relevant and impactful information with all of you that call the natural state home. Yeah, and I think it's awesome, too, that you want viewer input. Yes, all, all interactive. As well. So if you have a story idea that you'd like to see in any of our fields mm -hmm. or anything else, all you have to do is send them an email. That's right. right. Info at naturalstateupdate.com. Absolutely. And, and that's an important part. If you, if you have anything that you want to share, any ideas for stories, we're going to tell you how you can contribute at the end of this um, broadcast. Tonight. That's right. So very good. And business owners are viewers too. And if you have something going on in your business that is just great and you want to let people know about it, you can do so on the Natural State Update. That's right. We are excited. So let's get started. Here's a look at some relevant and impactful information for this week. We start with news for drivers in Arkansas. State police will be targeting those of you who are using your phone while you drive. Starting today, the 4th and going on for a week, state, county and local officers will be stepping up enforcement of our distracted driving laws. So please put your phone down while you are driving. Staying in that lane, traffic alert for those of you who drive I-30 near downtown Little Rock. Starting at 8 o'clock tonight, the 6th Street Bridge will shut down while the 9th Street Bridge will open. Then on Friday night, all lanes of I-30 from exit 140 to exit 140B, which is the area near MacArthur Park, will be closed for the entire weekend. So it might just be best to avoid that area. And are you or a loved one supported by a Medicaid-funded program? About a million people in Arkansas are, and there's a possibility that Medicaid recipients who changed addresses during the pandemic could lose their coverage even if they're still eligible. That's because no one was asked to update their information during the public health emergency, but that will be lifted in about 100 days. So be sure to update your info with the Department of Human Services. That wraps up our weekly update, so we now want to turn our attention to a topic that is not easy to talk about, but one that is very important to discuss. School shootings, the possible causes, and prevention strategies. Many believe Arkansas's first school shooting was the horrific encounter in Jonesboro, but the first documented case was actually 17 years earlier. Jason Peterson has the story. Just three months before the shooting at Westside Middle School, there was a school shooting here in Stamps, Arkansas, where a 14-year-old shot two of his classmates. They both survived. But 17 years before that, there was another school shooting here in Stamps, and in that case, the victim did not survive. Evan Hampton is believed to be Arkansas's first school shooter. David Hampton is Evan Hampton's younger brother. He was always, I guess the only word that I could say, different than me or my older brother. I was the youngest, he was the middle, and then my oldest brother was six years older than me. He was always a bit slow, uh, different. Hampton says that his brother was held back here in school due to his learning difficulties. As a 16-year-old freshman, he was being bullied by a 19-year-old senior. So they pulled both of the boys in and set them down and said, hey, if this continues, we're gonna kick both of you out of school. But nothing changed. The bullying continued until January 7th, 1980. I was sitting in study hall and I heard a noise that I didn't really think that much about. It sounded like you had had a big science book and dropped it on a floor and it went wow. And I heard that three times. And then I heard people screaming and then some kids ran into the study hall and said that Evan had shot a kid. The next day, as Arkansas Democrat told the story in a front page article, student at Stamps shot, youth held. Evan Hampton was convicted and sentenced to 20 years in prison. He was released after serving four years. That's when David says signs of his brother's mental illness became obvious. He began experiencing delusions. I thought he was on drugs. I mean, it was just bizarre activity. And we thought maybe he was on drugs or something. And. Uh, and it just continued to get worse and worse. Evan was diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic. David believes that Evan's bullying would not have resulted in a school shooting and another student's death without mental illness. 
Schools here in Lafayette County and across the state have anti-bullying policies, but David Hampton says both bullying and the mental health of teenagers needs more attention. I've dealt with mental health uh, from my jobs that I've had over the years and through the uh, seeing those people with mental illness, uh, you know, had, if they got the right help, then they would be there, possibly this wouldn't happen, uh, and, and their lives would be better. Despite his notoriety, Evan Hampton never left Stamps. He was found dead in his driveway south of town in the fall of 2020. The mobile home where Hampton lived now looks like a tornado hit it, and it wasn't in much better shape at the time of his death. His cause of death remains unknown. Evan Hampton was 56 years old and refused to take medication for the final 10 years of his life. Now that his suffering is over, David says he's willing to talk openly about what can be learned from Evan's life. As the brother of Arkansas's first school shooter, David is willing to speak to schools and law enforcement agencies to help raise awareness about bullying and mental illness. I'm not doing this in order to promote that or to do it, but I would be willing to do that. I have talked to individual teachers or principals before about this, but it'd just be a one-on-one -on -one situation about the importance of monitoring bullying and, and making taking steps to prevent it. And he needed to be placed somewhere or in a situation where he was made to take the medication, and you cannot force somebody who is not suicidal or homicidal to, to do that. For the Natural State Update, I'm Jason Peterson. Thank you, Jason. And if you'd like to contact David Hampton about speaking at your school or law enforcement group about bullying and mental health, just send us an email at info at naturalstateupdate.com. And speaking of bullying, we now want to share a story on the same subject, but with a much different ending. Ann Jansen takes us over the rainbow to Conway. Teenagers today have so many challenges, including trying to navigate who they are while remaining true to themselves. Today we're going to introduce you to a Conway sophomore who went from not only not fitting in, but being bullied, to finding a place where she belonged, finding her home where there's no place like it. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Lucy Strand is thriving today as she rehearses for the Red Curtain Theater's production of The Wizard of Oz. Playing the role of Dorothy Gale, who longs to be in a place where dreams come true, parallels Lucy's real life greatly. I guess you can say. While a talented performer and a good student, Lucy had been made fun of, ridiculed, and bullied seriously and continuously. And although she would put on a happy face, her emotional health was taking a hit. She struggled with friendships, um, which is what she wanted more than anything. And that, I think, had had a lot to do with it you know it's one thing to be involved but to be um, a part of it is a little bit different lucy's mom knew a change was needed a new school and a new town led her to red curtain theater i remember the first time lucy auditioned for me and i didn't cast her but that only made her want it more not only did she come back she started getting bigger roles the girl's got a lead role now. It's been a year. <laughs> Director Savannah Kirkdoffer says she knew the moment Lucy auditioned that this role was made for her. I was like, that's, that's it. She's my Dorothy. But beyond getting to play a role she's dreamed about since the age of two is the supportive community she's found. I always tell them, when y'all are here, y'all are your support system. Y'all are your friends. Like, we don't do drama. We don't do cattiness. You are here to support and love each other. There's not any competition, and we, it's just such a supportive community from the beginning to the end, and I want them to be able to take that 
and hopefully apply that in other areas of their life. Even the executive director of the theater has been surprised at the huge impact Red Curtain has had on its young actors. I expected to see them gain skills. I expected to see technique improve. What I had not been prepared for was like the emotional journey that these kids would go on, that kids would find a home, that they would find belonging, that they would find acceptance, that they would find love, and that they would find themselves. Every time I walk through the door, I just hear people go, Lucy, and I go, it's me. <laughs> A modern day cheers atmosphere where not only does everybody know your name, they support and encourage each other. She needs this in her life. And I'm so grateful, uh, so, so grateful to the Red Curtain to give these kids this, this option and to love them and, and make this available because it's, uh, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful outlet for, for these kids to have. Lucy's emotional well-being is better than ever, proving that home really is where the heart is. And There's there really no is like no place home. like home. They There's have no like made my life and many other people, li people's lives so much more brighter. Um, I've had so many friends just say, this is amazing. I don't know what I would have done without Red Curtain, and I feel the same way. She's one of the most amazing people I've ever met. To go through all of the things she's gone through in her life, and to hold her head as high as she has, and to be where she is now. I know she has nowhere to go but up. I couldn't be more proud. It's not possible to be more proud than I am of her. For the Natural State Update, I'm Ann Jansen. Thank you, Ann. And yes, in full disclosure, both of my own daughters are also in that show. And yes, I teach dance classes at the Red Curtain Theater. And yes, I'm promoting the show, but I know that it's going to be an excellent production you can see The Wizard of Oz by Red Curtain Theater at the Conway Junior High this weekend and next weekend. For more information and tickets, go to redcurtaintheater.com. That's theater with an R-E. Moving on, according to a recent survey by Wallet Hub, financial literacy in Arkansas is at an all-time low. They have us ranked 49th in the nation. So we here at Natural State Update want to help by offering some education on the subject, and for that, we go to Scott Inman. A bill that could impact your retirement and that has been brewing for almost a year in Washington is another step closer to becoming law. That's the subject of this week's Fastest Four Minutes in Finance. Hello once again, I'm Scott Inman. Well, we first told you about this new legislation last May. It's being called the Securing a Strong Retirement Act, or SECURE 2.0 for short. Almost a year later, the U.S. House passed the latest version of the bill this week. And the vote wasn't even close. It was 414 to 5. Of course, the bill still has to be passed by the Senate, but since it's a step closer to becoming law, we thought we would let you know how it could impact you, and it's complicated to say the least. The first SECURE Act, passed in late 2019, radically changed the way inherited IRAs must be withdrawn over time, and it also raised the required minimum distribution age from 70 and a half to 72. That's the age that Americans are required to begin withdrawing money from their IRAs and employer-sponsored plans. The new version would adjust that age again. The new RMD age will be 73 beginning on January 1 of 2023 for people who turn 72 after December 31st of 2022 and age 73 before January 1 of 2030. The RMD age will be 74 by the year 2030 and 75 starting in 2033. There's also an increase in the amount you can save in retirement accounts after reaching a certain age. Right now, if you have a 401k at work, you're allowed to contribute $20,500 annually to that plan. In the year you turn 50, you're allowed to contribute an additional $6,500 as a catch-up contribution. Well, the new bill would increase the catch-up to $10,000 
at age 62, 63, and 64, but not age 65. Complicated enough, right? The catch-up for simpler IRAs would go from $3,000 to $5,000, and both would be indexed for inflation over time. The current $1,000 catch-up for IRAs would also be indexed for inflation. But there is another new wrinkle to those catch-up contributions. Under current law, the catch-up contributions can be made on either a pre-tax or Roth basis. This bill would require all catch-up contributions to be made on a Roth basis. The bill also expands the Roth option to simple IRAs and allows employers to match contributions with Roth dollars. The bill would also make contributing to an employer plan automatic. It would require 401k and 403b plans to automatically enroll participants upon becoming eligible. Employees may opt out if they choose. The automatic enrollment would be at least 3% of employee pay, but no more than 10%. The amount would also automatically increase over time. Well, the bottom line, as you can tell, retirement rules are always changing, and if this bill passes, they are getting way more complicated. Working with a financial advisor who is staying on top of the ever-changing retirement landscape for you can help you maximize your opportunities and not make a mistake. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Scott. And by the way, the state now has a Financial Education Commission which plans to bring financial education into our schools. So here's a question for you. Have you ever been scrolling on social media and see someone at a concert or a performance and you think to yourself, I would have gone to that show if I'd known it was happening? Well, we're here to help you out with a rundown of Arkansas entertainment. And for that, we go to Amanda Horton. Hi, I'm Amanda Horton, director of Reynolds Performance Hall here at the University of Central Arkansas campus. I've been an arts presenter for over 12 years, but an arts fanatic all my life. We're fortunate to live in a state that has an abundance of entertainment options for all ages. Here at Reynolds Performance Hall, we have some great performances coming to you in April. First of all, a music and dance experience about Mexican-American history. Pachuquiso on April 7th, followed by Broadway's huge percussion hit, Stomp, on April 19th. Next, we'll have the Rogers and Hammerstein classic golden age musical South Pacific on April 22nd. And we're gonna end our season with something really fun. Direct from Las Vegas, the hilarious Popovich Comedy Pet Theater on April 29th. Conway Symphony Orchestra will also be performing on our stage in April. They will host American Composers in a tribute to Reynolds Performance Hall on April 30th. Finally, on the UCA campus, the Student Activities Board is presenting AJR in the Ferris Center on April 6th. If you want more music, then you really should check out Charts at the Pulaski Technical College campus. They will host sister duo Larkin Poe and Broadway star Leia Salonga. Robinson Center is also going to have some amazing music this year. Legendary Bob Dylan will perform on April 11th, and Rain, a tribute to the Beatles, will be on April 20th. If you're craving theater, then the Arkansas Repertory Theater's production of Into the Woods kicks off on April 19th through May 15th. You will also have the opportunity to see two different productions of The Wizard of Oz. As we've already stated, Red Curtain Theater in Conway will present its youth edition in mid-April, and Argenta Community Theater in North Little Rock will present the full-length musical with an adult cast in late April. Do you have a young family? If so, Simmons Bank Arena is the place to be this month. Disney on Ice presents Dream Big 2022 with all your favorite characters from April 14th through April 17th. And for the parents of toddlers, Baby Shark, the Splash Tour will be at the arena on April 26th. This should be a big hit for all the little ones. Finally, there's a new venue in Little Rock. The Hall has an eclectic music offering, everything from Lauren Elena to Government Mule to Cherub. Check out their website for their full April lineup. For the Natural State Update, I'm Amanda Horton. Thank you, Amanda. And unfortunately, a shoulder injury for one of the band members has postponed Government Mule at the Hall. Also want to let you know that both the Arkansas Symphony Orchestra and Ballet Arkansas have several performances in April, so we will link their websites as well. 
And that's a wrap on our first natural state update. What did you think? We want to hear from you, so you can email us at info at naturalstateupdate.com and be sure to share story ideas with us. And if you like what you saw here today, if you think there's a need for something like this and believe in our mission of offering relevant and impactful information to our Kansans, we're hoping you'll consider becoming a financial contributor. We have big plans here. We want to see the Natural State Update on streaming devices and podcasts, so if you want to help us do that, you can contribute through Venmo or Cash App. You can see the handles there, or if credit card or check is more your speed, just send us an email to info at naturalstateupdate.com and we'll get you taken care of. And if you're a business owner, we want to help tell your story, not in the form of an ad or sponsorship, but a story about your business and why people should support it. If you want to learn more about that, you can find me on social media or just send an email to info at naturalstateupdate.com. A huge thank you to Scott, Jason, and Anne. And if you are a former broadcaster, I will likely be reaching out to you soon. Next week here on the Natural State Update, a story on another very recognizable face, Ned Permi, and the beautiful artwork that he and other artists are creating. We'll also be raising awareness about a rarely talked about issue and one that has touched me personally in the past couple of years, suicide. How we talk about suicide has changed dramatically. So I so hope you'll tune in next week for that. And we always want to end on a high note here, because let's be honest, there's a lot of bad, heavy things going on in this world. Well, what gets me through is faith and hope in Christ. I know as journalists, we don't usually go there, but the Natural State Update is not just journalism. We want it to be much more personal. So on that note, I plan to share some of the Bible verses that have really spoken to me in hopes that they'll be encouraging to you as well. So this week, we start with John 16, 33. This is how I always end my testimony of faith when I share it with others. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Thank you so much for joining us. For the Natural State Update, I'm Christina Munoz.